Welcome to our third unboxing video. This one is a piece of guitar gear. If you read the title, then you're already aware what it is. Um, if you're liking these unboxing videos, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like the video, ring the bell so we can let you know next time we're uploading a video. This time, we're going to be unboxing and demoing a PEP, the Behringer DR600 Digital Reverb. I have been looking for a reverb pedal for my board for a little while. And the trouble that I'm having is I run a stereo board. I only have a couple of pedals on it. I'm not huge into effects. Those of you that watch Morning Jams know I pretty much sound like me all the time. I'm not real big into effects. I just like having a couple to tailor my sound a little bit. But one that I really want is a reverb. You guys probably think I have one because I lay it in after I'm done recording in my DAW all the time. But I really don't have one on my board and I want one on my board. But I want to run it right at the end of the board. I want it as an always on effect. And since I run a true stereo board, I need a reverb with two inputs and two outputs or I need to run two separate reverbs. The problem with two separate reverbs is I want the reverb to be the same in both channels. I think it'll sound really silly if I have different reverbs going in the different speakers. So I want one with two inputs and two outputs so that I can run a stereo in, stereo out, and maintain everything that I have now. All of the pedals in that, that meet that, all of the reverb pedals that have two inputs and two outputs are like $150 plus dollars. And I didn't want to go that much. Most of them are actually over 200. I think I saw one in the 150 range. And they're worth that money because they're programmable. I mean, if you're somebody that really uses reverb as an effect where you're changing it, where you're using different reverbs on different songs, where you're really utilizing the features of that pedal, those pedals are absolutely worth what they're charging for them. But I'm gonna find one reverb setting I like, I'm gonna turn the pedal on, and then I'm never gonna touch it again. I don't wanna spend $200 on that. So I did find two that were in a price range I was willing to pay, which was $50 or less. The two that I found were this one, the Behringer, and then Bai Yang makes one in the Baby Boom series. But I decided not to buy the pedal because it's part of that series. So. That left my options with one, which is the Behringer DR600 Digital Reverb. So, um, I, to be perfectly honest with you, I just, I like Spring Reverb. When you say Reverb to me, I think Spring Reverb. When I was uh, coming up, all of the amps that I had, had Spring Reverb built into them. I, I grew to love the sound, and it's really what I want. So I got the pedal, I got a couple of little things here. Um, I already went online and read the user's manual, so I'm not gonna, I don't have to read it again. I got one in Chinese, two in Chinese, oh, and one in English. So it does come with a little user's manual. So I did learn a couple of very interesting things from the user's manual. One of the interesting things that I learned was that this pedal, this is not an on off switch. It is a bypass switch. When you plug into it, it turns on and it stays on until you unplug from it. So unless you're, so if you're going to use a battery with this, you need to unplug your guitar when you're not playing. Um, I'm gonna use a battery for the demo, even though once it's on my pedal board, I'll be running through a power supply. I'm just trying to limit cables a little bit here. So uh, I am gonna show you on camera how to install a battery in one of these Behringer pedals because they're a little weird. Okay, so to install a battery in a Behringer pedal, any Behringer pedal pretty much, you're gonna need two things besides the pedal, the battery and a pen. The pen is for because Behringer pedals have what I consider a serious design flaw. 
See that little black dot right there? Add a press in on that. And then I got to go to the other side and do the same thing. And then the whole thing comes off. And there's my battery compartment. Why they couldn't just put a little screw at the bottom that makes this pedal spring, I don't know. Maybe that's why I have four pedals on my board that do that and one pedal that does this. Then you gotta put it back on. This is not easy. It really is not. Okay, there we go. Now it's not grabbing. There it is. I, I don't recommend these pedals if you're gonna run them off the battery. I really don't. It's just too hard to change the battery. That is a serious design flaw. Behringer, you need to fix that. You can put a battery here. You can put a battery here. You can put a little twisty thing there that unscrews that makes the pedal go boing. But this, this nonsense, that's got to go. That, wow. And I'm, I'm not bothered by it because I'm running it off power supply. But if you're using a battery, go with another brand. Seriously, don't mess with these if you're on a battery. So, but... As you can see, the light up here is not lighting up. So, let me get her plugged in. And the way this is going to work, if you use headphones for this demonstration, it'll probably work a lot better for you. Because the way it's going to work is the left speaker is output and input A. And the right speaker is output and input B. And then you can see the lights on now because I plugged in. If I unplug it goes out, if I plug in it comes on. Now if I hit the pedal, that light goes out. This pedal is still on. This pedal is still sucking juice. So at least according to the user's manual. Which is another reason I don't recommend using this if you're on a battery. So alright so here's what's going on with the recorder. Digital reverb, very, very dependent on pick attack. Your pick attack can completely change the way the reverb reacts to you. So what I did is I recorded a couple of loops, a rhythm and a melody that are in the same key um, and the same tempo. I can just play the loops into the reverb and then my pick attack's not gonna vary because it's the same loop over and over and over. Um, which is really going to allow you to have a very good demonstration of this pedal. So I'm going to throw some headphones on so that I can hear what's going on. And let's start recording. Okay, the first thing I want to do is play the samples for you. So... That's the rhythm. Playing right there. That's the melody. That's both of them together. I'm probably yelling right now because I can't hear myself. But I'm recording with the camera, so... Wow.
and here they are together, but with the speakers separated. No, here they are together with the speakers separated. So this is probably what I'm going to use the most, but okay, so let's just play the melody. I'm going to kick the pedal on. The level is supposed to only affect the level of the reverb. Sounds like noon is right about a 50-50 mix. All the way is drenched. Tone. is also only the tone of the reverb and noon is a, roughly the same tone from the reverb as I get from the guitar and by the way I'm on the modulation setting right now this pedal this button does not click as you turn it I would kind of expect it to and then time the level at noon. I'm on the modulate setting over here. So let's go back to room. This is the room setting. No reverb, room reverb, kind of subtle, as a room reverb should be. This is gate, a little more extreme. There's no way to control the gaining on the reverb, it, it cuts off when it cuts off, that's all there is to it. Time doesn't seem to do a whole lot, at least not on these ones so far. Alright, next setting is Hall. The hall setting is very ambient. This is plate. I can hear the time working on this one. Oh, I can hear the level work on that one too. And now, the one I bought it for. So here's my sound with nothing.
that is a spring reverb. So as you can hear, the reverb's coming out both ears. So it does that, it keeps the original signal. So I'm going into B right now, and the original signal is only coming out of B, but the reverb's in both ears. Just be aware of that. And it really is, like I'm looking over at my DAW, and I can see that it's going into the input that way. And I have everything traced that what comes out of B is only in this ear. So... A does the same thing. I'm curious, if I unplug B, what happens? Okay, what I... You can use this to split your signal. If you want to go from here to two amps or maybe use this to go stereo on your board. Because when I unplug B, I get A's output in both channels. What happens when I unplug A? Interesting. It maintains the B dry in MLB but the reverb stays in both. Okay, so be aware, it does not signal separate the reverb tones. It only signal separates the dry signal coming into it. Um, I find that a little limiting, but honestly, I paid 40 bucks for it. I am more than happy at the price point. Best price that I found was Musician's Friend. I will have an Amazon link in the description. Um, could, that could change by the time you're looking at it, but be aware, I found the best price on Musician's Friend. It was a full 10 bucks cheaper than Amazon. So, the other, the other thing that I'm not real fond of aside from the battery is the power. Is over here, which is fine, the way my board's set up it'll work, but I'd really rather have it up in the top here. I just would. So, again, here's the sound dry. There's the spring. Plate. Hall. Room. Modulate. And again, if they made this in just a spring, that's what I would have bought, honestly. I'm not interested in any other kind of reverb for my guitar. I use other kinds of reverb on other instruments and on vocals, but when it comes to guitar, just give me a spring, baby. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, ring the bell. Hope you pick yourself up one. They're well worth the money and they're a good little pedal. They are a plastic enclosure. Firstly, I don't care because I'm never going to step on it. I'm going to put it on my board. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to forget it's there. And that's what you should do with Reverb too. Alright, have a good day.